I'm really happy to, to be joining this uh, uh, discussion. Uh, and when I, when I read about the, the news of these, uh, uh, of these investments, I was, I, I was truly thrilled because I think it's a fantastic uh, positive message uh, during a very difficult period uh, for the country, the fact that we uh, are you know, uh, young uh, startup companies uh, uh, that were created in Greece by, by, by Greek uh, talent uh, are able to attract foreign capital. I mean, this is, this is truly excellent, uh, excellent news. Uh, and of course, it also came during a very difficult um, period for the country. But I think it's also testimony to the fact that we can do so much more um, uh, to support uh, our startup scene and to make sure that we can attract more capital uh, to the country, create uh, more jobs, uh, and make uh, you know, the presence of the Greek um, startup ecosystem um, uh, better known uh, abroad. Uh, because I think a lot of things have been happening uh, uh, under the surface uh, in the Greek uh, um, uh, startup ecosystem. And even during the crisis, we had some success stories. But it seems to me that we're picking up some momentum. And of course, the more capital companies attract, uh, the more better known these stories are, the more you know, younger people will have incentives to, to focus uh, uh, more on, uh, on entrepreneurship. Uh, and of course, we are trying to do whatever we can uh, to support the entrepreneurship uh, uh, ecosystem, uh, providing you know, more tax breaks for uh, R&D uh, uh, investment, a new framework for better tax treatment uh, of, uh, of stock options. Uh, uh, we are, for the first time, uh, going to be teaching uh, our uh, high school kids uh, the basics of entrepreneurship. So something is really changing in terms of the uh, attitude of Greek society um, uh, towards entrepreneurship. Uh, uh, so, you know, as someone who comes, who spent, you know, several, um, actually s seven years working uh, in, in the venture capital industry at a time when it was difficult to generate real traction for these types of investments, I'm really very happy uh, with what is happening on that front. But I, I don't want to talk a lot. I want to hear uh, your stories. Um, and maybe, I don't know, Panagoti, which way you want to do it. Maybe we can start with the companies, um, just a few words. I know what you do, but just, you know, how, uh, you know, what do you see basically um, uh, the, uh, the, the future now after the, uh, the, the investments that you um, uh, received and, uh, you know, the fact that uh, you're teaming up uh, with, uh, um, uh, with big international companies. And then I want to hear for also from, um, uh, from the fund, but also the companies, what it is that you saw uh, in, in, in the startups that sort of generated your uh, interest to make these, uh, um, uh, these acquisitions and these investments. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister. Um, I, I'm going to ask uh, the founders of uh, Softomotive, uh, Mario Stavropoulos and Chris Kaninis, to, to start. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'd love to give you a very brief intro of uh, what we are as a company and what was our journey. So we started back in 2005 and was a startup in every aspect back then. Uh, our, our focus from the beginning was uh, on a product for uh, automating processes for the business users and making users more productive in the workspace. Uh, it's, uh, it's worth noting, I think, that uh, from the beginning, uh, we, we never realized as a mindset, we never had in our mind the distinction between the Greek market and the international market. I mean, um, being immersed in the, in the internet culture, it was just a large community uh, for, uh, regardless of the, of the physical location or the country. So what happened at some point was that uh, business of different sizes start realizing that this technology can be of great value for optimizing and automating processes and cutting costs. So uh, suddenly, we, uh, suddenly we start getting uh, approached by large organizations and enterprises. Uh, we transformed the company from a B2C company to a B2B company, and well, this was a very interesting uh, process and, and learning, and we've learned a lot uh, through this process. Um, so then, uh, long story short, at some point, uh, we raised uh, a, a funding of uh, 25 million USD uh, from a London-based uh, based, uh, growth equity fund. Uh, so then we, we started expanding. Uh, we had already had presence uh, in, in London, uh, in the US, uh, and, and in other locations, and we started expanding our presence. Uh, and then, I guess if you would like to say a few things from then on. 
Uh, well, I would like to, to focus mainly on, um, uh, on the discussions during the acquisition. And um, while the, the, the acquisition deal was in the making, uh, the conversations we held uh, convinced us that apart from soft automotive product per se, uh, Microsoft genuinely appreciated the human capital of the company and its achievements. Uh, the, appreciations, the appreciation extended from the software engineers uh, that work on the product to the professionals that support uh, market and sell it to the customers. Uh, we considered Microsoft's uh, decision to retain the R&D team in Athens and establish a development hub for the Power Automate platform here as a vote of confidence for the Greek, for the Greek software engineers, professionals, and in a way for the Greek startup ecosystem. Uh, and uh, honestly, it was one of the most decisive factors that made Marius and I in agreement with our investor always overcome any obstacles that sooner or later, as you can imagine, arise during lengthy negotiations and bring us to where we are today. And I'm grateful that I have uh, the opportunity today to publicly thank Charles Lamana and Microsoft Corporate Development uh, Team for that. And with this, I would like to uh, pass the baton uh, to uh, the, the rest of the panel as I'm equally eager to and keen to uh, hear their stories too. It's the right time to ask Charles what he, you know, um, what he saw in the company and what was the rationale behind the, uh, the uh, investment. I think we're always trying to convince, uh, you know, big companies that there's an excellent talent pool uh, in Greece that we have highly uh, qualified uh, uh, people, fantastic uh, engineers, and that it does make sense to actually keep, uh, a, 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 you know, a big presence uh, in the country because that's where the human capital is, and of course. We also have the, the capacity, um, uh, we have hundreds of thousands of talented Greeks who work abroad who would love to come back to Greece. So there's also, if you want to grow, there's also a talent pool which is abroad, which would love to come um, back to Greece and possibly work for you know, a highly successful company that now is also part of a, you know, of, of, of a technology giant. So um, what, what it is that you um, saw that generated your interest? Yeah, I, I would say that uh, from a Microsoft perspective, it was, it was a deal 15 years in the making. We just didn't know it yet because <laughs> I'd say Marios and team have done a great job building really remarkable IP and, and truly world-class technology. Like we looked around the entire world over the last six or nine months for a company to go partner with in the RPA space. And we really wanted to go after soft emotive because the technology and capability was so impressive has been built up over those 15 years. But it's not just the technology, it's exactly like uh, Marios and Ardris were saying, it's also the fact that there is a team that deeply understood the space for RPA, understood the customer needs, and also had the right vision uh, and roadmap to actually go to, I'd say, execute on RPA in the future. So those two combinations are why we got very interested in soft emotive specifically. Um, and now afterwards, our goal and, and the plan is to have an RPA development hub inside of, of Greece, in Athens, seated with the soft automotive team. So that's that's the plan and, and vision, and that's a big step for Microsoft. Um, this, I think th this is the first real R&D presence we have in the country. Um, and the fact that it's coming from soft automotive, a, a company that has a great culture <laughs> and technology fit with Microsoft, um, gives us all the more confidence that it can be successful. So we're really looking forward to the next couple of years. I think we have some we talk, I was talking with Mario, so we have a pretty ambitious two-year plan uh, to work together. Um, but we think that having the presence there with the, with the human capital and human resources already in the country will be very valuable uh, for Microsoft. So we're, we're super excited about it, of course. George Sidiropoulos and the founder of uh, Think Silicon. Yeah. Good afternoon. Yes, I'm George Sidiropoulos. Uh, we're based in Patras and Athens. Uh, back in 2007, uh, with my partner, Jakob Stamoulis, after working for many years for a US corporation, Atmel uh, had a big site uh, in Patras, Greece. Uh, we decided to, to found our, our own company, Think Silicon, and to focus on uh, graphics processors. So what we are doing is we are developing a graphics processor, something like uh, what NVIDIA is doing, but in a very, very small scale. And our main applications are smartwatches. So most of the smartwatches the coming years will include our technology there. 
Uh, the way we managed to, to build the technology, to build the team, uh, grow our expertise in the field, uh, apply for many patents, and finally build the products was uh, through a lot of work, days and nights. And we also used some uh, regional and uh, European uh, grants for, for R&D. Uh, at the end, we managed to, to have uh, the biggest asset of the company is mainly our customers. So we managed to have customers uh, in the social media space. We have some um, very big corporations in the processor space. Uh, we have an OEM, uh, which is the biggest uh, smartwatch uh, OEM in the world. Um, we managed after many years through our presence also in North America and Asia, uh, having some sales uh, offices there, uh, and building our network, which is consisting of Greeks of diaspora, but also uh, people worldwide. Uh, we managed to build our customer base, and this is very important. It was also very important to my understanding uh, for applied to approach us, and uh, this also happened through our network. Uh, I would prefer Gary to talk uh, about the reasons that uh, Applied came to us and what they saw in Think Silicon and why we're here now. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Applied materials, uh, technology and products are at the foundation of every semiconductor chip and every display that's made in the world. We're the largest supplier of those, those types of technologies. And we're at a point in time, certainly we see uh, Greece is doing a great job uh, managing through the current uh, crisis, but all of us are uh, working and living very differently than we were a few months ago. Uh, and, and I'm a strong believer that technology is going to transform every aspect of our life in the next decade. If we look forward, many people talk about uh, more than $10 trillion of economic value being created as technology is transforming every industry. Uh, remote learning, I have 10-year-old twins. Every morning they get up and they do uh, remote learning, uh, e-commerce, and also work from home. Uh, we actually have made tremendous progress in bringing many people back to work. Um, it, because we're part of the essential foundation in the United States, but, uh, but still, I think work from home uh, is, will be pervasive going forward and really will change how we work. And I think that's also this remote connection, the ability to do any job anywhere in the world creates a great opportunity. And certainly with Think Silicon, uh, we look at continuing to grow that capability because we can work in a very seamless way uh, with new technologies. And rel relative to why, uh, you know, why we have the combination with Think Silicon, if you look at the infrastructure for the data economy, uh, again, transforming uh, education, remote healthcare, uh, everything in our lives being transformed, power and performance are incredibly important. There's going to be an explosion of data uh, going forward, and the power consumption and the latency, the bandwidth is incredibly, incredibly important. And think, think silicon technology, even though maybe today it's on the smartwatch, can be at the foundation of the trillion edge devices uh, that will power the future uh, data economy. And certainly the semiconductor technologies uh, where applied has broader and deeper technologies than anyone in the world, Combining the materials, the new structures, the new architectures, and design, uh, including Think Silicon as a very important part of that strategy, that is the future. And so we're very excited uh, for this combination. Well, as you said, if you, can, if you can work from anywhere, why wouldn't you work from Greece? Might as well pick a nice, <laughs> might as well pick a nice place. <laughs> well, I think it's about the talent. I mean, certainly we're incredibly impressed. Uh, with the talent, the passion of the people. Uh, so absolutely, I think this is the future and uh, we absolutely plan to continue to expand uh, in Greece with Think Silicon. Hello, uh, my name is Roberto Kustas. I'm co-founder and CEO of Deep Sea Technologies. And with me. Konstantinos Fekopoulos, co-founder CTO. Okay, so we started Deep Sea just three years ago and uh, 
at deep sea, we use artificial intelligence to transform the way the shipping industry operates and communicates. So we create our own hardware in Athens in our offices and send engineers all around the world to install the systems to collect the data from vessels and then transfer them to the cloud and use AI to provide with amazing insights, not only to ship owners, which Greece has an abundance of, but also to charters all around the world. So by teaming up with ETF, we have a unique chance and a unique opportunity to bridge the Greece's shipping heritage with bright young minds in Greece. And what is truly astonishing is that Greece has an abundance in talent of AI. Ecosadine, you can talk more about this as CTO. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, Roberto and I both uh, moved to Greece from um, uh, the UK to start this business. Uh, and uh, we've been constantly astonished by the, the level of uh, AI talent uh, in Greece, in, in particular. And we've also found, uh, as you mentioned, Prime Minister, that there is this huge pool of Greeks abroad at the top level in the United States who are waiting for an opportunity to move back. And we've been able to, to leverage this and we've, um, we've managed to recruit many people to come back. So actually what, what happens, is we have many people who have come from Facebook, from Amazon, from Oxford University, PhDs in Cambridge, and we actually attract talent, not only Greek talent, to gain it back to Greece, but also we have some global talent which comes to Greece to work. We have British people coming, German people, and it's amazing because, as you said, if you could choose a place to work, there is no better place than Greece. Uh, so, yeah, re regarding uh, where our company fits into the, the broader Greek economy, uh, we believe that the huge value which the collection of data from vessels um, uh, and the development of AI and, and, uh, and, and analytics uh, is essentially moving the center of gravity of the shipping industry from the vessel to the shore, in the same way that across industries, uh, you are seeing the center of gravity moving to the people who collect and process the data. Uh, and I think uh, there is a huge opportunity here for Greece to leverage the advantage it has in the sea to build the infrastructure on the shore and build the maritime tech uh, companies and the uh, new wave of, of, of AI companies. Uh, and uh, uh, we hope to play a role in, uh, in, in building this thing. Yeah. Rob, what did you see in the company that you like? Well, um, I, I think uh, I'm going to throw my uh, prepared comments out the window and go in a slightly different direction. Um, uh, having Gary to my left and Charles to my right on the Zoom uh, screen here, it really amplifies the fact that uh, the best companies in the world are interested in Greece. Um, so when we invested in Roberto and, and Constantinos, uh, we thought we had found the best in the world. Um, and it's great to see leaders like Microsoft and AMAT also recognizing that Greece has the potential to develop some great companies. Um, so uh, our goal, our role is to take what is, uh, uh, I don't know if it's a, a secret in Greece, but certainly not something that was very obvious, try to make it not just a European champion, but a global champion. Uh, and we've already done that. So I think in the short time that we have been invested, which is a matter of weeks, uh, we've been on the phone with partners in Singapore, potential partners in Singapore, potential partners in the UK, uh, et cetera. And the idea would be to take this, this 40 strong team and turn it into a global champion and then attract the attention of people like Microsoft and AMAT. Again, you're in different businesses, but that, that's the example I have in my mind. So as a venture capitalist, we have to fundamentally believe that uh, Greece is in going in the right direction. And I think thanks to uh, your efforts and that of your team, Kirakos, uh, we're in a wonderful position moving forward. Um, and I think as a venture capitalist, uh, it gives us a lot of confidence uh, in terms of where Greece is headed so we can make long-term investments. Well, this is, uh, this is indeed a very, um, so a very promising story that you, that you all uh, um, uh, told us. Uh, uh, and again, you know, as far as the, the companies that are already, uh, you know, operating in Greece, uh, I'd just like to congratulate you. It's, it's, it's always a great pleasure when, uh, uh, you know, you're at the stage when, when you see that all your, uh, your, your effort can, uh, can lead you to, um, to a next step, you know, be it an acquisition by a big company or uh, an important investment uh, by a, a VC fund. Uh, uh, so you've really uh, tried and worked very hard during very difficult times, and uh, I think it's a great signal of optimism uh, that uh, these transactions uh, took place uh, over the over the past months. But also to um, uh, to, the, to the big um, um, uh, you know tech giants, 
Uh, please, uh, you know, spread out the story that uh, this is a country that should be on the map uh, of, of big technology companies. Uh, it has, I think, the, the political uh, stability, but also the, the human um, uh, uh, talent and the human capital, as well as a government that I think understands um, uh, what it needs to do to support uh, rapidly growing uh, high-tech uh, companies, and I think there's no better story to be told than the story um, uh, you, you all told us uh, today. It's a very, very uh, encouraging uh, message, and hopefully um, we'll see more uh, you know, Greek companies grow, uh, attract uh, interest from abroad. The goal is always to create you know, as many high-value jobs as we can uh, in Greece uh, and uh, you know, uh, make sure that you know, Greek companies uh, make us proud by being noticed uh, in the international um, technology space. So, again, thank you all very much. I don't know, Panagot, if you want to add something. Um, well, I, I think I, I would um, love for Costas Malios to add one, one comment. Uh, he's the um, uh, corporate vice president at Applied Material, but he's actually, it's the second Greek company he's selling to an uh, international uh, corporation. Um, because a couple of years ago, he sold Inoetics to Samsung. So, and he's a Greek, uh, he's from diaspora. I see, he, I see a lot of uh, uncles that uh, would be really valuable for us. Uh, only for a minute, Mr. Sure, Prime well, go ahead, go ahead, Costa. Yeah, uh, hi, Mr. Prime Minister, hi, hi everyone. Um, you know, I've, uh, I've been on the privilege, I've had the privilege of both selling a, a Greek company to a very large multinational and now being on the other end of buying an amazing Greek company for applied materials. Uh, and I came, you know, Gary has this vision about artificial intelligence, which I think is a global vision, of course, is, you know, for, for everyone. And, um, and we've been working on this. And, you know, it's not because I was Greek that we chose Think Silicon. We chose Think Silicon because it's a great company. The talent that is there, the team that is there, that has already been spoken about, I think is very important. Um, I think, you know, if I can, if I can, you know, I've also, I'm also a VC in the country as well. I'm part of PJ Tech Catalyst, a VC fund. Um, and the, I think that's what's important, I think, is right now the country has momentum. Um, and I think, you know, through the series of deals that are happening currently, and through, frankly, the rebranding of the country, and you have played a huge role in that, Prime Minister. Um, I watched your uh, talk with Antholis yesterday, and uh, frankly, I felt very proud as a, as a diaspora Greek. Um, I think you have a great opportunity. I've spoken with uh, Deputy Minister Dimas and Zakiris you know, in the last few weeks, and I think there's an opportunity here to actually bring together a, a consolidated plan um, to really use this momentum to go forward, something very specific, um, that can act activate all the shareholders. I think there are a lot of fans outside of Greece. There's tremendous talent and fans inside of Greece. I think there's an opportunity to, to build a coordinated effort to really leverage this at this point in time. I think coming out of the COVID crisis and the leadership, I think that Greece has shown uh, on the world stage, I think is, uh, is, is commendable. Um, and um, I, I, for one, would love to help now as part of a, a corporation investing in Greece with Think Silicon and working with George and Yakobos and the team uh, as the next Microsoft guy and so forth. Uh, you know, we're, we're big supporters of what you and the government are trying to do. Thank you. Thank you, Costa. I, I'd just like to ask our two deputy ministers to say a few words, um, starting with um, uh, Christos Dimas. I would like to ask, actually, uh, everybody to... Uh, invite you to follow the Greek ecosystem. So we're very proud about the ecosystem. We're very proud about these three success stories. We want to uh, have further success stories and we're sure that we have the capability to do so. Um, within the next month, we will have uh, the, the Greek entry point to the ecosystem, a URL, Elevate Greece, which will actually present uh, the ecosystem, including the, the startups, uh, incubator centers, the accelerator, accelerators, the VC funds. So we believe that it will be a, a very positive extroversion message uh, of the country. And uh, I would like to ask you to, to have it in mind, keep it in mind. And we, we are also uh, legislating within the month uh, tax incentives for business angels, super deductions, as the prime minister said, for uh, R&D investments. And we are also creating an innovation district in Athens and an R&D center uh, in Salonika. Uh, so it's uh, a strategic priority of the government to invest in our human capital, scientists, young entrepreneurs. And uh, we hope that we will have uh, many success stories like the three that we discussed today and in the near future.
I'm also an ex-venture capitalist. So once venture capitalist, you're always a venture capitalist. And uh, I will be very brief. I would like to thank you very much uh, for uh, being here today. Most of you, you know me from the past. I can tell you that uh, with Deputy Minister Dimas, we are working in a very complementary way. He's building the ecosystem. I'm financing the ecosystem. Uh, and I can reassure you that uh, all the tools, financial tools, in particular equity tools, that will be needed in order for this ecosystem to grow, uh, some of them are in place, and a lot of them will be in place uh, very soon. Thank you very much. Well, um... That was a very interesting discussion. Again, thank you all very much for your time. Um, I wish you um, uh, best of luck. Uh, and again, uh, hopefully, uh, we'll be uh, in a position uh, uh, to, um, to make this uh, a, to turn uh, uh, this into a trend uh, in terms of attracting more um, uh, foreign uh, large multinationals um, uh, to Greece, but also making sure that we stimulate uh, our own ecosystem um, uh, First, by providing you know, venture capital, Greek venture capital to uh, rapidly growing companies, and then hopefully also attract uh, a big foreign VC um, uh, players uh, uh, to complement the capital that will be available in Greece. So again, thank you all uh, very much for your time, and uh, best of luck.